topic. And it has been used as a weapon by many trademark owners to counteract others' bad faith filings that are not for use. However, in recent years, some good faith applications filed by legitimate applicants are also suspected to be in violation of Article 4. And office actions are issued by the trademark office demanding the applicants to demonstrate the use status of the applied marks. Some of our clients are puzzled or worried about this situation. How to deal with such office action? How to avoid the risk of our applications being judged as violation of Article 4? How should we adjust our filing strategy according to the practice change? Today, one of our senior attorneys, Mr. Yongling, will focus on this issue and talk about the trends of practice and the suggestion of strategy on Article 4 with some case study. Mr. Ling joined SPTO in 1999 with more than 24 years of rich experience in the field of trademark. His practice ranged across trademark prosecution, search, research, search and analysis, opposition and invalidation, IP portfolio management, as well as IP strategic consulting. His presentation will last about 30 minutes with up to 15 additional minutes for questions. You may raise your questions through text message during the presentation, and you are also welcome to send your question by email, and we shall duly reply. Now, let's welcome Mr. Ling. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thanks for attending this webinar. My name is Yung Lin. I'm a trademark attorney from Shanghai Patent and Trademark Law Office. It is a great pleasure to meet you online, and I'm honored to have this opportunity to talk about trademark practice trends and strategies under Article 4 of China Trademark Law. The examination opinion on the benefits filing not intended for use. Now let's get started for my presentation. In this webinar, we will present legislation and the latest practice change relating to Article 4 of China Trademark Law. Discuss the key considerations in responding to the examiner's opinion on possible violation of Article 4 and map out the applicant's strategies and tactics to minimize the risks of meeting these kind of office actions. Let's start with the first part, legislation and practice change on Article 4 of China Trademark Law. In the past decade, with the period of trademark examination being shortened and the official phase for filing being lowered, the number of trademark applications in China has grown dramatically. As you know, China adopts first filing per simple, and uh, there's no requirement for the applicant to present trademark use or promise to use when submitting the applications. Bad fees filings and trademark holding are becoming increasingly serious. Some applicants were found to take advantage of these changes for squatting trademarks not for the use purpose. Here are some examples. The devices in the left of this slide reflects bad face imitations to the trademarks Adidas and Louis Vuitton in various forms. The right is a list of more than 800 trademark applications covering 33 different classes. And these applications are filed by an individual person such applications in bad faith cause troubles to other normal applicants, hinder others from registering their own trademarks, and jeopardizes their legitimate interests. 
in order to cope with the situation and avoid troubles for the business in China. Many entities have to invest a lot of efforts and cost to take actions against the bad faith applications and applied for a large number of trademarks for defensive purpose. In 2019, the China trademark law was revised, focused on cracking down against trademarks in bad faith by imposing Herian tools. In particular, Article 4 was amended to add that a bad faith application for trademark registration, not for use purpose, shall be rejected. This provision could be a base for filing opposition or invalidation. The examiner can also reject an application based on Article 4 on his own initiative during the examination for this application. It can be seen from the practice during the latest several years, CNIPA has vigorously cracked down trademark holding and gave greater attention to actual use of a trademark. Following the amendment of China trademark law in 2019, CNIPA issued a series of regulations and notices to continuously crack down bad faith trademark applications, including the bad faith filings not intended for use in violation of Article 4. In the several provisions regulating trademark applications and registrations and the trademark examination menu, the considerations and factors to judge the applicant's possible violation on Article 4 and the typical cases are clarified and, and disclosed to the public. In the work plan for systematic governance of bad faith registration of trademarks to promote high quality development, it is mentioned that CNIPA will take kinds of measures, including new technologies, such as big data, cloud computing, and the artificial intelligence to crack down malicious registration and trademark holding. In this January, CNIPA initiated a public consultation on the revised draft of trademark law. The draft includes some significant amendments to the current law. And one of the major amendments is to guide trademark registration to register for actual use. It mainly concerns the following articles. In Article 5, the requirement of use or promise to use is added as a purpose of filing application for trademark registration. Article 14 and Article 21 prohibits repeated registrations of identical mark and limits only one mark for the same goods that can be owned by the same applicant. According to paragraph one of article 22, the activity of, of applying with no intent to use of filing applications in bulk will be presumed that an application is made in bad faith. And article 61 provides the requirement of declaration of use and the registrant should explain the use of the trademark or provide justifiable reasons for non-use every five years during the registration. This article tends to limit the number of trademark filings to necessity of actual use and increase the burden of use from the trademark owner. But now it is still uncertain whether all of these articles will be returned in the revised trademark law. Anyway, the trend of the legislation is very clear to strengthen the applicant's obligations and the responsibilities to actually use the mark after acquirement of the trademark registration.
uh, in this slide, the upper diagram shows the trademark annual filing numbers in China in the past 20 years. The table below shows the total filing number and the number of bad faith applications or registrations rejected or removed by CNIPA in the past two years. In 2021, the examiners rejected around 60,000 applications for registration on their own initiative. And the number is about 35,000 in 2022. With the change of legislation and practice, the total filing number in China, as well as the bad faith applications, have all shown a downward trend in the recent two years. According to the trademark examination manual, Article 4 is mainly targeting against four kinds of bad faith filings. Trademark holding without use purpose, infringement on the prior rights of multiple entities, improper appropriation on public resources, and improper profiteer activities. If the applicant's bad faith is obvious, for example, its applied marks are identical or highly similar to many other parties' famous brands, or the names of scenery spots, landmarks, industry terms, or other public resources, there would be no very high requirement for the total filing number of the applicant. In some cases, we noticed that the bad faith applicant files only about 30 to 40 applications, copying some of others' famous brands and the geographical names, the applications are deemed as a violation against Article 4. And such applications are even maintained for refusal by the examiner. If the malicious applications are filed against the trademarks of the same entity, generally speaking, it should be regulated by other articles of China trademark law instead of Article 4. The examination manual provides two exceptional situations to Article 4. If the applicant applies for a trademark identical or similar to its registered trademark for defensive purpose, it does not apply to Article 4. If the applications are filed in appropriate amount and they are made for future business with realistic expectations, it does not apply to Article 4 either. However, please note that the number of filings for defensive or reserve purpose needs to be moderate. If the amount of filings for defensive or reserve purpose are very high and clearly exceeds the applicant's business needs, it may also be regulated by Article 4, even if there's no other malicious intent by the applicant. With a great number of bad faith applications are cracked down. Sometimes we see that trademarks filed in the normal course of business are determined to be impossible violation of Article 4. And the defensive filing made by good faith applicants may also be affected. In some cases, the examiner noticed that an applicant has filed a large number of trademark applications for registration and they are suspect to be malicious applications, not for use purpose, with possible violation of Article 4. Thus, the examiner will issue an official notice on the opinion, demanding the applicant to explain the filing intention and use status for all of the pending applications listed in the notice. Supporting evidence is also required to submit. If the applicant's reply is not accepted by the examiner, the applications will be refused and the, re and the refusal are maintained even after review 
if the explanations and support evidence are not convincing to the examiner. When meeting such an official opinion due to Article 4, the applicant has only 15 days to make a response. So the applicant needs to respond cautiously and rapidly to avoid the following refusals. This kind of official actions may capture some good faith applications and cause impact on the defensive filing strategies. Here is a sample of the official notice on the examiner's opinion based on Article 4. In this case, the applicant's total filing number is 955, covering all the 45 classes. And the recent patent, pending applications is 58. Although there's no other bad faith in, information for the applications, the applicant receives such an official notice and is requested to explain the filing intention for all of the 58 pending applications and the reason for the 45 class coverage in the record. Next, let's discuss comprehensive considerations when the examiner decides to initiate the possible office action based on Article 4 and the key points to collect evidence and find the response. In the examination procedure for trademark application, whether to initiate the examination opinion based on Article 4, comprehensive elements will be taken into consideration, including the total number and the recent filings, class coverage, and time span of the applications. Constituting elements of the trademarks, the applicant's company profile, and other factors. It is said that seeing IPA uses big data and other information technology means to conduct a comprehensive scoring, score, scoring through data analysis. If the score exceeds a certain degree, the system will automatically remind the examiner to consider starting the Article 4 examination procedure. The number of filings, including the total and the recent applications, the classes of goods involved, and the time span of the applications are the, obj are the objective factors to judge the composition of bad face filing, not for use purpose. If the number of ap applications is huge and obviously exceeds the applicant's normal business needs, as an independent consideration. Even if there are no other malicious factors, it may still be suspected of trademark hoarding and trigger the examination opinion based on Article 4. As far as the constituting elements of the mark are concerned, it will be considered whether the applicant applies for a large number of the trademarks. They are identical or similar to others famous or distinctive brands. Whether the applicant applies for registration of a large number of others commercial signs, such as tree names, domain names, slogans, design patent, etc. In addition, whether the applicant applies for a large number of applications for marks containing administrative divisions, geographical names, scenery spot landmark buildings, as well as industry terms or products generic terms. This will also be likely judged as bad faith due to improper use for public resources. Once it is identified as having such malicious intent, the possibility to trigger the examination opinion and meet the following official refusal based on Article 4 is very high.
the, applic the applicant's comp company profile refers to whether the trademark application matches the applicant's business skill, business scope, business needs, industry characteristics, and whether it, it, whether it exceeds the applicant's normal commercial requirement. If the applicant obviously does not have the corresponding ability to use the marks, but applies for a large number of trade marks in a short period of time, there's also the, the risk to trigger the examination opinion on Article 4. In addition, other factors such as whether the applicant has a large number of applications and profits through trademark transfer, or the applicant has been confirmed by effective official decisions or judicial rulings with malicious trademark registrations or trademark infringement, whether the applicant has been put in a list of serious violation of law and losing credit by administrative authorities, as well as the trademark filing information of the applicant's related parties are also the consideration factors that trigger examination opinion on Article 4. As we have discussed, the applicant needs to take it seriously and make a rapid response with supporting evidence if meeting the official opinion for possible violation on Article 4. Only the arguments or statements are not sufficient. And based on our experience, once the applications are refused due to Article 4, it is hard to overcome the refusal through review or further court appeal. The applicant's pending applications usually can be classified into several categories. Trademarks being used in China, trademarks haven't been prepared for use, trademarks for possible use in future, and trademarks filed only for defensive purpose. The applicant could make explanations and collect evidence according to different use status and the filing purpose. And the folks on explaining the trademark applications are reasonable and necessary to the applicant's business in China. The purpose of submitting evidence is to prove that the trademark applications are reasonable and necessary for the applicant's business, so as to persuade the examiner to waive the opinion on possible violation of Article 4. When replying to the office action, the applicant may try to collect evidence from the following aspects. First, evidence relating to use. If the applied trademark has been actually used on the designated goods, there's no doubt that the relevant commercial documents for trademark use is the most power powerful evidence. If the applicant prepares to use the trademark in China, he can submit the documents for the relevant business plan or preparations that has been made for implementing the business project. In addition, the overseas trademark registration or trademark use can also be submitted as evidence to prove that the applicant has genuine intention and reasonable business need for use of the trademark in China. Second, evidence relating to trademark. In case of a defensive applications, we can prove that they are reasonable and necessary by showing that the main brand owns High reputation, high reputation and, it, and it is original and strongly distinctive. Evidence re um, relevant to the applicant business condition or status. Enterprises in different industries, different size, and uh, enterprises with different business scope will inevitably have different needs for trademark applications. For example, the retail industry tends to have a wide range of categories and its application, 
often cover far more classes than a single manufacturing company. Internet companies are characterized by strong explosiveness and the number of Chidamaka applications in a short period of time may be higher than that of the enterprises in other fields. Even within the same industry, the needs of leading companies and startups for Chinamark applications are completely different. Therefore, we can prove that Chinamark applications are reasonable and necessary by collecting and submitting evidence to reflect the characteristics of the applicant's industry, the size of the entity, its business history and current status, and the business scope for wider coverage of the products. Evidence relating to the market. If the applicant's trademark has been preemptively registered or copied by others in China or infringed by third parties, we can submit evidence such as the applicant has taken actions against infringement or counterfeiting. It can further confirm the applicant's trademark layout in the advance of filing of defensive applications to prevent trademark squatting is necessary. Finally, it can also provide a comparison of the number of Chinamaka applications and class coverage for the competitors in the same field. Such information can also show that the applicant's filing numbers is reasonable from this effect. Based on our experience, the examiner is not very strict about the use of evidence or evidence of intent to use in the response to the examiner's opinion. The mark can be used by the applicant or its affiliated entities. It can be used before filing or after filing of the application in China or outside China. The overseas use is also helpful to prove the applicant's intent to use for the same mark in China. Further, it is unnecessary for the applicant to prove the trademark use for each item of the designated goods or services or each subclass. The use of the trademark on any designated item could be possibly acceptable to the examiner and persuade the examiner to waive the opinion for possible violation of Article 4. Further, there's no specific figure for acceptable number of filings for defensive purpose or reserve purpose. The acceptable scope depends on comprehensive factors, including but not limited to similarity with the main mark, fame or reputation of the main mark, the applicant's scale and business scope. Relevance between the designated goods and the applicant's business field characteristics of the applicant's business industry, records on trademark infringement, counterfeiting, or pre-active registration by other parties in bad faith. The high degree of the trademarks, the greater popularity and higher fame of the main trademark, the larger scale of the applicant, the wider business scope, the stronger relevance of the designated goods to the business field, and the more serious infringement or counterfeiting in China. The acceptable scope for defensive or reserve purpose is bigger. I would like to share two successful cases we handled. The first case is for an applicant in the retail industry. Its total Chinamak filing number in China is over 1,300 covering 45 classes. And its recent pending applications within several months are 81. And most of the applications are filed for defensive purpose or possible use in China in the future. So it is hard for the applicant to submit evidence of use in China. In this case, we mainly submitted the evidence listed in the right square including the applicant's enterprise's history, business feature and status around the world, including China, high fame and the influence of the main trademark, 
ranking of the brand value in the retail field, aggressive actions against the trademark infringement and counterfeiting in China, effective, effective decisions on trademark opposition or invalidation against the trademark holding in China, the 20 year time span for the applicant's trademark applications in China, and the contrast of trademark application data for other famous competitors in the retail field. And such evidence was finally accepted by the examiner and the examiner waived the opinion on possible violation against Article 4. Then all the 81 trademark applications passed for the next step for substantive examination. The second case is for an applicant in the field of sporting article industry. Its total filing number in China is 560 covering 25 classes. And the number of recent applications challenged by the examiner is 74. Most of the marks pending for examination filed by this applicant has been actually used or the applicant has intent to use in China. So in this case, the evidence we mainly submitted includes sales, advertising, and uh, other commercial documents to prove the actual use of the brand in China. In this case, the examiner also accepted our statements and the relevant supporting evidence and gave up the official opinion on possible violation on Article 4. All the 74 pending applications passed to the next step for other substantive examination. Here is a case for negative result in response to the official opinion. This case is for B dark epic characters. B dark epic character belongs to Samac Products Limited. It is a Hong Kong company. The origin of the company's business can be traced back to 2005 when B Duck AP character was created by its founder. And their main business is for copyright license. Uh, we can see that in the first 10 years, the annual filing of this company is only about 10. However, in 2021, the company's trademark applications was booming reaching about 3,000. Although the applications filed in 2021 were all about the names and images of BDAC family, and there's no other bad faith intention for BDAC trademark filings in China. The examiner insists that the number of trademark applications of BDAC is obviously beyond the normal business requirement. Almost all of the trademark applications filed in 2021 were refused. And the refusal were even maintained in the review. And finally, BDAC withdrew and abandoned almost all, the, all of these applications in 2021 and suffered heavy loss due to violation of Article 4 of China Trademark Law. At last, let's make a summary for our recommendations to minimize the risks of encountering office actions due to Article 4. In general, I think it is unnecessary for most of the entities with good faith to over worry about the office action for possible violation on Article 4. If you do not have an extremely large number of trademark applications in a very short period, even if the examiner issues the notice for possible violation on Article 4, there's a reasonable chance to overturn the examiner's opinion as long as the applicant collect the relevant evidence and make the response seriously. In order to minimize the risk to meet the office actions due to Article 4, we recommend to make a reasonable trademark layout and good plan for its trademark application in China. To arrange trademark applications according to priority level, 
find the applications in normal rhythm and avoid a large number of applications on the same date or within a very short period, period of time. To manage trademark portfolio carefully and determine the appropriate scope for defensive purpose according to the level of importance. According to the applicant's business needs to apply for an appropriate amount of trademarks for reserve purpose in advance. Unless the trademark is, is particularly important, generally we do not recommend 45 class coverage for a single brand. 45 class coverage does not mean that it will definitely incur the official action due to Article 4, but it is indeed a sensitive element when judging the possible violation against Article 4 of China trademark law. If practicable, registered trademarks may be held by different entities within the group rather than being held by a single entity so as to avoid the amount of total filings is relatively very high and trigger the possible F of its actions due to Article 4. Uh, that's all for my lecture today. Thanks for your watching. Now we will go to the Q&A session. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ling. Uh, your presentation is very informative. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, yes, here uh, I uh, see one question. The, the trademark office has a blacklist of applicants whose application has been judged as violation of Article 4. Uh, if an application is judged as violation of Article 4, will that uh, have ne negative effect on the approval of a uh, later application filed by the same applicant? Uh, if our response to the examiner's opinion is in one class, in one case, is accepted, or we uh, successfully overcome a refused uh application based on Article 4 in one case, would that secure our other applications? Mr. Lane. Uh, for the first uh, question about the blacklist, uh, what we know from the Trademark Office is that uh, at least there is no blacklist disclosed to the public. According to some official notices, the wording blacklist or whitelist should not be used in determining credit of legal subjects in the field of intellectual property. Uh, as I said, judgment of violation of Article 4 is a comprehensive consideration. And uh, it depends on many factors. I personally do not believe that an application will be judged as a violation of Article 4 simply based on a so-called blacklist. However, if there is a record for the applicant's previous violation of law and uh, official punishment, it will bring negative effect to the applicant when judging the possible violation of Article 4. Um, okay. For the second question, um, According to our experience, violation of Article 4 is just case by case. If your application is judged as violation of Article 4 in one case, it does not mean that you, you other applications will meet with the same problem. Uh, likewise, even if you have successfully over overcome an office action based on Article 4, it does not mean that you, your other applications are safe from this article. I think uh, you'd better make a good plan for your trademark applications or layout in China to avoid the risk of encountering such office actions. 
based on Article 4. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I have another question from uh, Wei Shen Chen. Uh, the question is, you recommend not to file too many quest questions on the same day or a very short period of time. Could you please define the short period of time? Uh, is it within four months or six months? Uh, I think there's no specific uh, time span. Usually, uh, if you file uh, um, the applications, a large, a large amount of applications within uh, three or four months, uh, there's still risk to, to be challenged by the examiner during the examination. Hmm. If uh, the time span is expanded to, to over six months, I don't think that that is not a very short period. You, you know that uh, currently China Chinamark office, uh, the examination process is very, uh, is, uh, relatively fast. It only takes about uh, four months for Chinamark office to complete uh, a normal application. So so not too, too many Chinamarks on the same day or a very On the same day or uh, within several weeks or within mm. one or two months. Mm. Mm. Yeah, if, if the time span and beyond the six months, I, I don't think that's a shorter period of time. That could be defined as a short period of time. Okay, thank you. So, uh, I. I didn't see any other question from the message box. So uh, that's all for question. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, we all hope that in the near future, the law could effectively crack down bad faith applications and at the same time provide effective protection to good faith filings. As Mr. Lin said, China trademark law is under uh, another revision. Sometimes we are invited to attend uh, to the meetings held by the Trimark office to collect suggestion to the revision. If you have any qu question or you have any remarks or uh, recommendation to the revision of Article 4, you are welcome to provide us and we will try to submit it to the Trimark office. And as always, we uh, SPTOL will provide uh, our recommendation and advice to our client. Uh, whenever you have any question in trademark field, please feel free to contact us. That's all for today's webinar. Thank you and hope to see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.